Happy New Year everyone! Yes, it's another year! Where did the last one go? Yeah, well it went behind us. Now we're going forward. So let's go forward into this new year and glorify God. Let's do our best. Let's work well with our hands and glorify God. Let's walk in holiness and godliness. And as we do these things, we're going to see that God has created us for greater things. Things that we couldn't even think or imagine, the Bible says. Because with God, all things are possible. So let's go forward. What I want to do now is I want to just show you that what God has done for us. You know, if you're there and you're thinking, hold on a minute, I don't know God. Or you're thinking, well, I don't know what he's doing for me at the moment. I don't understand where I'm going. I don't understand what my goal is. I don't understand what my dreams are. Well, you need to get a dream. You need to get a goal. But what I want to talk about is not so much dreams and goals, because so many people will be talking about that. I want to talk about what the Bible says. So let's just get the Bible up. And see what it says. It keeps on switching off my computer. Bit of a pain that, but anyway, there we go. Something else I've got to learn. There's that many things you've got to learn. But you know that's what it's like when you're walking with God. We're learning all the time. It's not like we've made it, or hey, Pete Kirk's made it, or anyone else has made it, or you've made it. We haven't made it yet. We're a progress. Everything is progressing, going forward with God. Amen. So it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, what has God done for you? Well, one thing he's done is he's created the heavens and the earth so that you can be walking on the earth and have the heavens around you and see the glory of God. What, what I want to show is what God has done for you already. So if he's done all this for you already, what is he going to do for you in the future? And if you don't know him, this is what God has done for you. So give your life to him. Ask him to forgive you for your sins because he's even forgiven all your sins as well, which we'll get on to later on. But for now, I just want to show you what God has done for you in the natural. Because in the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. Well, we can see them, can't we? We can see the heavens. As in, you know, we can see above us and we can see the starry hosts. You know, even the three wise men followed a star. Why? Because it was so bright and it went somewhere and they followed it and found Jesus underneath that star. Well, you see, with us as well, we can follow the Holy Spirit because God's even given us the Holy Spirit. But we'll get onto that a little bit later on as well, right? God has done so much, so much for us in the name of Jesus. Now, this is going to be a bit of a problem. So, Let me just go down now and again to sort this out. Because I haven't got a table. What's happened is I sent the table back because it had a chip in the middle. And now they're quibbling about stuff like they do. But hopefully I'll have one soon. Right, so in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He has created the heavens and the earth for you. For you to enjoy. Not for you to be here and thinking... Do you know what? I'm fed up. I've got nothing to do. Why does everything keep going wrong for me? I mean, why? Well, there might be things in your life that, you know, old habits. You may have given your life to Jesus, but there's still some old habits there. And you just, you know, they're making you fed up because you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And if you keep on doing the same things over and over and over again, what's going to happen is you're just going to burn out because they're going to be causing you problems. God has created the heavens and the earth for us all to enjoy. 
We might be feeling a bit miserable. We might be thinking, what shall I do? I don't know where to go. I don't know how to do things. But God has a goal and a dream for you. But first, let us see what God has done for us. This is what he's done. I'm telling you, this is what he's done already, right? He's created the heavens and the earth for you to see everything. You're walking on the earth. You can go for a walk. You can see all the trees. You can see the rivers, the streams, the waterfalls, the pastures of green land. You know, man makes buildings. You know, you live if you live in the city, all you'll see is the city. If you don't go out of the city, you won't see anything. You won't see what God has made because you're just in a man-made jungle. You know, yeah, you'll be able to see all the people and God has made us in his image, right? But we might not be aware of that. So let's go forward, but go out. You know what happens when you're stuck in something? You know, let's say you're in a box and you, you go out of that box. You see what's on the outside of the box. You know, if you're in your house all the time, you don't see anything. But when you go out, you start to see things. Well, when you go out of your environment, your surroundings, where you live, you see things as well. And this is what happens to us. We can get so closed in that our lives, our minds, our actions become so small that when we want to do something a bit bigger, guess what? It's really hard work and we don't want hard work because that's just natural. We don't want hard work. We want things to be easier to us. We want things to be simple. We don't want them to be complicated. That's how we're made. So expand. You know, the Bible talks about lengthening your cords, strengthening your tent pegs. You know, make your tent bigger. Make your house bigger. Make your life bigger. And when you make it bigger, when you go to do something smaller, well, you go in that way. And so it's much easier. But when you're smaller and you're trying to make your life bigger, it's always harder, you know? And that's why we don't like hard work, because it's hard to do. But hey, you know, like I've said, we're a work in progress. We're going forward. Everything is a progression, line upon line, precept upon precept, brick upon brick. We go forward and we build. We're building our lives. We're building our lives in Christ Jesus. We're building our families. We're building businesses. We're building all kind of things. We're building YouTube. We're building. You know, we're building a studio. We're building. Verse 6, then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made a firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. So God's now separating the, the, the waters from the heaven from the earth. And then he's going to come on to then God said in verse 9, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. So here we are now, God dividing the land and the water. And so this is where the moon comes in. So in verse 9, he says, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and he called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas and God saw that it was good. You see the sea is separated from the land and this is where we get um, everything working together because God made boundaries and boundaries that, you know, the sea cannot come over a certain boundary. When it does, it's because there's a storm or a tornado or a hurricane or something that's malfunctioning, let's say, in the earth, you know, and it's causing destruction. But normally, on a, on a regular basis, if you know what I mean, that the earth 
is where it is and it doesn't fall to pieces or volcanoes happen. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the earth is a living being in that respect. It's moving, it's growing, it's groaning as the Bible says. You know, it's, it's moving. Things are happening under the earth, in the core of the earth. All this stuff, which I don't understand, but you know, I know a certain amount and it's all moving and shifting. And this is where you have um, those plates moving and all this sort of things happening. You know, people know much more about this sort of thing than maybe I do. But you know, there's a volcanoes going up because the gases and, and things are exploding. You know, when we eat something, we need to go to the toilet, you know, and, and that's just basically the same. We can't keep on eating you know, and not go into the toilet. Whereas, you know, in, the, in the, the earth, you know, it can't keep on like having all these gases and all these things happening to it and the things that we're doing to it without something happening, you know? And there has to be, you know, gas expands. It has to come out somewhere. So it comes out of a volcano. It comes out of cracks in the earth. It, it does all kinds of stuff. You know, I don't understand all that aspect. But that is what the kind of things happens, as far as I understand, anyway. So, you know, so, but we're talking about what God has done for us, not the devastation. That's the enemy, and that's the way we're treating the earth, and that's the way we're messing things up. You know, God created the heavens and the earth. He did make a mistake. You know, he did make a mistake when he created Adam and Eve. You know, it's just that Eve sinned and then Adam sinned and the devil sinned against God and was cast down to earth and he wanted to mess God up. So he thought, well, what's the best thing I can do? I'll tell you what, I'll destroy his creation. So that's what the devil's doing all the time, destroying the creation. You know, he's making people think that they're the different things than what he made them. He's making people think that he's a bad guy, you know, and he's a bad God and he's, you know, or he doesn't exist. No, that's the enemy telling you those sort of things because God does exist and he does change lives. And I can show you many people that have been changed by God. And I can show you many people that have been devastated by Satan. So there we go. Okay, so let's keep positive here because it's new year and we're going into the new year with a bang but not how the world was made no the world was created by god he created the heavens and the earth and i'm showing you what god has done for us he's done all this for us because he wanted a relationship with us and so he created us and to have a relationship with him a good relationship he created the lands and the seas to behave themselves and to produce crops and to be good for us okay we'll come on to that bit more and um, and then well here we go in verse 11 it says then god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed in itself whose seed is in itself on the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind and god saw that it was good so evening and morning were the third day now the thing with the seed is you know we get stuff uh, genetically made these days and it's not got a seed in it why has it not got a seed in it because it's genetically made you know it's been changed but you know, God made fruit with seeds in, okay? So seedless grapes aren't what God made. They're what man has manufactured and changed, things like that. So, you know, always eat something with a seed. Me, that's what I do anyway, right? I look for something that's got a seed. I mean, bananas didn't taste like they do. We had, we had a banana and I won't tell you where I got it from because they might call me up, right? Or, but, you know... We had some bananas. They were terrible. Why were they terrible? Because they'd been messed about with. They didn't even taste like bananas. So now we're having to get organic bananas because we can't eat the ones, especially from that shop. And it's a major shop, you know, but hey, who am I to talk about all this stuff? You know, we know it and we know what's going on, but a lot of us just keep quiet. But it's time to say something and say, no, I'm not eating this rubbish anymore. Stop making it, please. I want real food. Right. So anyway, that's what God has given us. 
God created everything real. He didn't create anything false. He created everything real. So here we go. So then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. You see, God is working hard, right? He's working hard at all this. He's not just going, I'll tell you what, I'll just do it in a couple of seconds and then you lot can get on with it. No, he's not like that. He's a loving God and a caring God and he wanted everything to be right. But the enemy, the devil, who was a worship angel, he did all the worship for God, right? He thought, you know, I will be like God. I will be above the Most High. No, and God went, I don't think so. Get down there. So he sent him down to the earth, okay? Now, when he made Adam and Eve, he made Adam out of the earth and Eve out of his rib, and they became one. And Satan, because he's going roaming around, seeking to someone that he can devour, right? He's going round, and so guess what? He couldn't find many people when there was only Adam and Eve. So guess what he did? He thought, I know, I'll go to the woman and then she'll say to the man, and then I've got them both. Because if I go to the man, he might go, hey, Satan, clear off and do one, right? But no, he went to the woman and he beguiled her, right? That's what happened. So anyway, so God is, 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 is saying, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be signs and seasons. Now, again, right, this has been changed and everything into the occult, okay? And I've been in all this sort of stuff, so I do know quite a bit about it. You know, and fortune telling and spirit guides and uh, um, the, the 12, I can't even believe what they're called now because I've removed it that far away from me. 12's like signs and all this, you know, uh, Leo and Cancer and all that business, right? You know, it's, it's just, no, follow God. Follow the Bible. Follow God's instruction. You know, the Bible says, stay away from soothsayers, which are fortune tellers. Don't do witchcraft. Don't do Ouija boards. Don't do all these sort of things. They're not going to do you any good. And they're certainly not going to take you into the new year with the blessing of God. No, you'll take you into the new year with the cursing of the devil. Right, because he's out to curse, but God is out to bless. There you are, blessings. There we are, blessed. Right, there you are, tree of life. Right, back Jesus said, uh, God said to, sorry, God said, don't eat the, from the tree of good and evil. Right, it's in the garden. You can eat anything you want, but don't tree, eat from the tree of good and evil, because then you will know good and evil, you see. Why do you need to know good and evil? Right. Because you don't need to know evil. So Adam and Eve just knew good. But when they ate from the tree and were disobedient, disobedience always brings problems. Disobedience brings the enemy right to your door. And you open up like that and he comes flooding in. And he comes flooding in through your mind because this is a battleground. And he talks to you and he leads you astray. He doesn't lead you towards God. He'll always lead you away from God. Whereas the Holy Spirit will always lead you to God. Right, okay. So anyway, so then verse 16. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. That's the moon. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. Because we need light to go around. Like I said, we put a light on, you know. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And we're only on the fourth day. Look how much God has done for you, right? And he's done all this so that you can go into this year with all that God has given you and made for you and delivered to you and put in front of you. But if you don't take hold of it like a Christmas present and unwrap it, you're not going to see what's in there. You're not going to see what God's done for you. And you're not going to take hold of what God's done for you and use your Christmas present for a better word. Yeah? You know, don't leave it in the box all wrapped up and everything with a ribbon on it. It's no good on a shelf. No, God's no good on the shelf. He needs to be in your heart. And then you can go forward with him because he'll speak to you by the Holy Spirit. 
So, and like I was saying, he made the moon to govern. He made the sun to govern. He made them to do things, to rule. Now, if he's made the sun and the moon to rule and to, to divide and to, to, to make things right and bring boundaries so the sea doesn't come over all the earth, right? Then what's he done for you? What's he going to do for you? They're, they're, not for a better word, but, you know, well, for a better word, they're things. You know, they're soil and stones and rocks. They're not living in the way that we're living, how God made us. Look how intricate we are. People go for like, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years to learn how to dissect a body and make people better if they have a car crash or, or something happens to them or they, they get a sickness, you know, because again, disaster and sickness doesn't come from God. It comes from our reckless thinking, our reckless actions, or it comes from Satan, or it comes from listening to things that are not right, or listening to people that are trying to deceive us, you know? If somebody scams you, it's not God that's uh, told them to come and scam you because God's more likely to say, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together and running over will men pour into your bosom if you give. But if you're always taking and you take this and you take that and you're always deceiving and everything, you're not walking in the, in God. You're walking in, the, in Satan, basically. You know, you're listening to him. You're doing his bidding. No, do God's bidding and things will go well for you for the new year and every year after that. You know, in the Bible it says, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. His name is above every name that is named in heaven and on earth. His blood cleanses all your sins away because he sacrificed himself on a cross and there's no forgiveness of sins without a sacrifice and that's what Jesus did and that's the gospel verse 24 then God said let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to its kind you see, everything is according to its kind. You know, a man doesn't give birth to a horse. Sorry, well, the man doesn't anyway, but you know what I mean. A man and a woman, they, they, they make love and then they have a baby. You know, if everything goes right, okay, according to the plan and the way God's made everything, okay? They don't have a horse or a cow or a donkey or a sheep or a lizard or anything like that. No, they have a human being because every seed produces after itself. A donkey has a donkey, a giraffe has a giraffe, an elephant has an elephant. You know, we produce after our own kind. Corn produces after its own kind. You sow a corn seed, you get corn. You sow wheat, you get wheat. And that is how God's made it. So why are we all trying to change everything when God's made it perfectly clear, a man is a man, a woman is a woman, and that's the way it is. A lizard is a lizard, a donkey is a donkey, and a piece of corn produces corn on the cob. Right? So, so then, then in verse 25, it says, And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and God saw it was good. You see, at the end of this, he always says, and he saw it was good. Because God is good. I believe that I shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Well, where am I living? I mean, living in the land of the living. Because I'm living. Amen. Then God said, let us make man in our image. Well, here's a good one. We've touched on it a little bit already. But, you know, let's make God in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Yes. You see, God created us in his image. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we look like God or God looks like me. But no, when we have God in us, we act like him. We look like him in our actions and in our speech. And yes, we live in a natural world and I like watching some comedies on the television, you know, films that are, are, are comical, you know, have a bit of fun and stuff like that. I like watching serious, I like watching Christian films, I like watching some action films, but I don't tend to watch them because my wife doesn't really like them. So, you know, I, I go with that one. It's not a problem. She does things like with me. I mean, we go fishing and hopefully we'll have a fishing channel soon, you know, because I love fishing, right? But that's, we, we do these things as well because we're on the earth. But I also preach the gospel. I also talk to people about Jesus on a one-to-one -one basis when I'm out. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for the gospel is the living word of God that saves people's souls. You know, when I'm talking to somebody, you know, they can make out that they don't know anything. But you know, by the time I finish talking to them, they usually told me, like, my auntie's a Christian, uh, my sister's a Christian, my brother's a Christian, actually. I'm the only one that's not a Christian. Or, yeah, I've got a friend, like, I went fishing the other day. Um, I, I was in a fishing match yesterday, and I spoke to someone, and he said, you know, my best mate was a Christian. Hey, don't talk to me about Christianity, though. You know, that's what I told him. And, I, and I'm like, that's fine, mate. You don't want me to talk to you? I won't talk to you about Christianity. But you know I'm a Christian, and you know that, you know, I'm going to do some things in Africa, and that's how the conversation started coming. You know, and he told me a lot of things about his friend. Unfortunately, his friend had passed, and, you know, he wasn't here anymore. But... These things, you know, everybody knows, some, well, I can't say everybody, but most people know something about Jesus. So when you're talking to them about Jesus, it'll all be going round in here and all going round in the heart. Yeah, the mind and the heart will not be standing still, even though they're standing still, looking at you as though they don't know anything. Believe me, they know something or they've got somebody in their family that is saved. You know, so speak with confidence. Yeah, when you're talking to somebody, don't preach at them. Preach with them, if you know what I mean. Be at their side. So, 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 their so, so, show, <laughs> I need some to do teeth. Show them some love. Show them some kindness. Help them in a way that maybe their mates wouldn't even help them. And they go, hold on a minute, I don't even really know you, but you've helped me more than what my mates generally help me. You know, whatever it might be, do that. So, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You see, God gave us dominion in the first place. And then Adam and Eve when I tell you what, Satan, here, you can have all the, the, the dominion, because we've got it, and then we'll we'll like be deceived by you, and then we can all be in a mess, right? So then Jesus came and said, right, well, I'm going to die on a cross for you. I'll take all the mess, and then you can be like you were in the beginning, in the garden, when you only knew what love was, even though you now know what, you know, sin is, right? But you don't have to sin. I'll give you the power not to sin. Right? Even though you know what it is now. And that's what God does. That's what God's given you. That's what God's done for you. you know, all this is done for us, for me and for you, so that we can go forward and glorify his name, that we can walk tall, that we can be strong, that we can be healed and delivered. Because there was no sickness in the garden in the first place. So 
Why take that sickness with you into the new year or even into the next second? Say, get out of my body in the name of Jesus right now. Right? And you'll be surprised at how many people that are listening to this will get healed. I pray that the power of God will come upon you right now. And I command that sickness in your body to go in the name of Jesus. The power of God. The healing God. The loving God. The kind God. He's given you all these attributes because he's given him, he's given himself to you. So use what God has given you to go forward into the new year. You might have got caught up in all kinds of stuff, you know, and it's just like you're way back here, like in, you know, in, in, in January and February coming through and March and April and June and July and August and September and October and November, December, and you're here to ready for January. And you've collected a load of tin cans on the way. Okay. So just sit down and think, what tin cans have I collected along the way that I don't need because I can't stand all the noise. There are all the clanging and banging and blah and going on, right? I don't need it. So cut it off, cut them strings off, right? And the tin cans won't be making as much noise. You know, we've just got a dishwasher, right? Not a dishwasher, a washing machine, right? Because our of the washing machine wasn't washing the clothes properly, right? So we've got this new washing machine. I can't believe how quiet it is. And at the end, the washing machine played a little tune to tell us that it had actually finished, right? The old washing machine will be banging about and clanging. In verse 29, God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And now he's, he's come to the sixth day. Okay? And he's still going forward. Because God always goes forward. He doesn't go backwards. He always goes forward. He's given us everything that we need to eat, to drink. He's given us a place to sleep. He's given us sleep so that we're not up 24 hours a day, even though we'd like to be up 24 hours a day, some of us, because we've got that much to do. But no, he's made it so that we have to go to sleep. And if we do too much work, we'll probably fall asleep on the settee, in a chair, hopefully not at work, you know? And I don't go to sleep during the day because I find it very hard and I, I wait, when I wake up, I don't feel great. So I try to stay awake during the day and sleep at night. You know, experts would say we need eight hours sleep. Some people need less. We're all built different, but let's go forward because we're all built in the image of God and he's given us all these things for us to go forward in into the new year. And in chapter 2 it says this, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. See God finished. There's always a time when things are finished. You know the hard work finishes. But you've got to put the hard work in to build something because a building always has an end. Yes, there might be things to do later on, like, you know, when I've done the house up here and I've got a couple of jobs left to do, but God didn't leave any jobs left to do. He created everything just perfect in his sight for us to enjoy. And then it says, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Emphasising all the work that he had done. He finished, but he rested. You know, you need a rest. It says, work six days and the seventh rest. You know, I'm very good at resting in one respect, but I'm also very good at working. So I have to be disciplined. You know, I've had my own business for 15 years and then I've had other businesses. You know, and I have to do some resting and I can't always work and do everything. 
that I want to do. So I go fishing, I go for a walk. I don't generally just sit down or I might watch a film. That's what I do. I'm either at church or I'm at work or I'm looking at YouTube or I'm doing something or I'm making YouTube videos. I'm doing something, you know, I'm either making music, you know, like I'm singing tomorrow night at the crossover. You know, that's what I'm doing. I'm singing. So, you know, I'm going to be doing another album soon. These are the things we, we work hard at, but there's also got to be a point when you've done a song, it's finished. You can't keep adding on to a song because if you had, keep on adding on to a song, you're going to spoil the song. It's a little bit like too much spoils. It's just got to be the right amount, just the right amount. And so then God said, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it, in it he rested from all his work which he had created and made. This is the history of the heavens and the earth where they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. And this is what God has done for you. And it's been so good to me. Even if you don't know that it's been good to you, even if you don't recognise it's been good to you, or even think that he's there, because he's the one who's given you the breath. Actually, he's the one who's given you the breath. It's you that's deciding to do wrong things. Just like if I decide to do the wrong thing. You know, he's given us a choice. And choices is a whole different video, right? But he's given us a choice. He's given us life. He's given all these things to us. He's made us in his image. He wants a relationship with us. He's given us Jesus who died on a cross for us to take away our sin. He's just waiting for you to ask. Open up that Christmas present as to speak and say, yes, I recognise you, Jesus, as Lord. I want you in my life. I want a better life. And I want to know the plans of God for my life in this new year so I can go forward and be successful, work well with my hands, speak the right things, think the right things, read your word, renew my mind, and glorify your holy name this very coming year. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you've liked this video. Please subscribe and please like. And let's go forward together in Jesus' name. Amen.